Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. We're going to take a look at the cryptic film Candyman 1999. Now, the interesting thing about this film is that it was set in the year 2020, which was last year. And I'm calling this decode today Apollo, bringer of the stinger. So we uploaded a trailer over the weekend, which is what we're going to look at today. We uploaded it on the backup channel. And it's about this Candyman film from the franchise from 1999. This is Candyman 3. Now, I picked this particular sequel to look at because, of course, it has 1999 in it, which is three sixes, right? But I also picked it because the film is set in 2020, which you can see right here in the plot. Now, I thought to myself... How accurate might this film be in terms of what we're experiencing right now in 2020 or last year? And here's what I found. It was pretty shocking. The sequel is called Day of the Dead. Again, it's Candyman 3, Day of the Dead. And, of course, that's the Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday, right? So... What you're going to see in this short decode is Hispanic themes running through this film. Now, we'd already decoded the first and most recent Candyman films. Or actually, the very first film came out in the 90s. And then a reboot just happened here in 2021. And we decoded both of those. And we discovered the true secret behind Cabrini Green. Cabrini Green is where the Candyman uh, manifested in modern day. He was actually from uh, generations ago. I think it was the 1800s or something when this all started during eras of outright racism in America. And that was the story behind him. And then he re-manifested in modern times. Now, Cabrini Green is named after Mother Cabrini. We decoded that as well. She was the first American saint. And they had just erected a monument to her. And they had decided to erect it before the Spamdemic. And then they actually built it during the Spamdemic. It was in 2020. The monument is orientated towards the Statue of Liberty, which we have identified as Helios Apollo Sol Invictus. And in this monument, there are two small children riding in a sinking paper boat. Now, how do we know the paper boat is sinking? Because we saw a film about her in 1947 in the boat sinks. That's what paper boats do. So, I don't want to review too much more of those decodes. But if you haven't seen them, you might want to take a look at them. Because it definitely ties into what is going on right now. Now, who is Candyman? Well, at its core, at its root, he is a demon. The demon... The clown demon, demon of candy, and all sorts of other things. And so that is what we have decided was the spirit behind everything we're going through right now. So let's get back to this 1999 sequel. So I started watching the film, and at first, the only thing that really jumped out at me, of course, was the stinging bee aspect, right? And we had discussed this in previous decodes, that this was the candy man's signature that he would reveal himself in the form of this swarm of bees before he would take his victims. So it kind of dovetails in with the whole Vidco 19 Pokemon Stinger now being mandated around the world. So you can kind of look at that as a swarm of inescapable bees running around stinging everybody, right? But that alone wouldn't be the litmus test for me to decode a film or to at least present it to you. I know that the themes are there, but in order to present the argument that this was foreshadowing, there has to be a lot more, doesn't there? You can't just say bees are like, you know, stinging things that are stinging us right now. So I kept watching the film. And it was at about that point that I decided that we had a video when I saw the two leads, the two lead actors sitting down and they each had two tequila shots. 
And they set the shot glasses down on a Corona drink coaster. Two shots each. And that's when I figured we had a video. Let's watch some of this play out. So now the film has my attention, right? Because this is definitely symbolism that has emerged over the last several months. This whole Corona thing, this theme going on here. But then I took a closer look at the coaster. Now this revelation didn't come to me until this morning because I was wrapped up in all the other symbolism. But what do we have here? We have a tree and a spiral. Remember, spirals are portals and trees are portals. So here they are side by side. What took us through this most recent portal? Corona did, didn't it? Life has changed forever. We've entered into a new era, a new dimension of what we call this reality. The world has changed forever. Now let's keep watching. A few more of these and all your troubles will be set aside for tonight. A few more of these and all of your troubles will be set aside for tonight. So, they're ba this is basically subliminal take the shots, right? A few more shots, right? So, it feels like it's happening right now. Now, what is the Day of the Dead? Listen. What exactly is the Day of the Dead? What exactly is the Day of the Dead? It's a day to honor the loved ones that have died. You go to the cemetery and you have lunch with them. <laughs> what is the Day of the Dead? Well, they're obviously taking tequila shots, aren't they? And so I looked this brand up, and this is what I found. Saza Tequila. Look at the logo here. It is the serpent wrapped around the pole. Yes, it's an S and a T, but the subliminal symbolism here is the serpent wrapped around the pole. Now, if you're still in doubt about how this links into Apollo, understand that the man that developed Saza Tequila was born on the eve of Halloween, you could call that the Day of the Dead. He died on Lupercalia, and he died at 66 years old, which, of course, we've already identified as the number of Apollo. It's T. Rump's 66th floor Apollo penthouse. But there's far more to this than this. just this. Let's keep watching. Get out of here. Now understand that these are all props and symbolism. They're either intentionally placed there or they're supernaturally appearing. And it, what it does is it reveals the plans of the enemy. Obviously the enemy had plans all along to do what he's doing right now. Now this scene right here confirms our original observation of the Saza Tequila with the basically the serpent wrapped around the cross or the serpent wrapped around the pole. Jesus actually contrasted himself to the serpent wrapped around the pole from the wilderness when the Israelites had to look at upon it to be saved. He said, just like Moses raised up a serpent in the wilderness, so to the Son of Man will be raised up on a cross to save the world. So here it is on this guy's tattoo. You see the skeleton basically crucified on a cross, and you see a serpent wrapped around it. So you know that we're not just making all this up. Now, 
We know from research that Apollo is the bringer of disease, but he also offers the cure. You can just go on to Wikipedia, look up Apollo in the ancient writings, and then you can read it right there, that he brings both disease and the cure. And what does he require? He requires a sacrifice called a hecatome, which is 100 cattle. So, who is the Apollo character in Candyman? Well, you're about to see him right now. It's this cop laying on the ground. His name is Kraft. And throughout the film, he makes all these like racist comments. Here's his Wikipedia page for Kraft. They even call him one of the two racist cops, right? And here's the here's the negative uh, I just showed you that, but I can't show you too much more of that. But just suffice it to say, throughout the film, he makes lots and lots and lots of degrading comments toward people of the dark races. And so it is clear that this is who they, they are depicting. Now, what does this have to do with Apollo? Well, the role that T. Rump played was that of a racist. It's not that he's really any more racist than any of the other politicians, because they all are. They've all been caught saying stuff. Reagan's been caught saying stuff, uh, you know, and it's not really about a race. It's about humanity. It's about people who aren't rich like them because they probably make bad jokes about white people too. Okay. We even saw Bo Jivin making comments. They all make comments because that's what's in their heart. They have dark hearts. So I'm going to show you now how this character is actually a modern manifestation of the T-Man himself. Apollo. He becomes the scapegoat for Candyman. And he's blamed for the murders. And you're going to see next that he was actually born on Apollo's birthday, Christmas Eve. Which, of course, is the, shares the same birthday with Sol Invictus, Dionysus. Candy. Now, his name is Wade Williams. There you can see he's, that's him. And there's his birthday. Now, this just so happens to be the exact day that the first case was isolated in China for Vidco-19. On his 58th birthday. Remember the T-Man's first speech for his campaign? It was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, just yards away from unmarked graves of a massacre that happened there. Candyman. Now, Wade was also in Dark Knight Rises where that was filmed in that exact penthouse, the 66th floor of the 58-story building at T. Rump Tower. Here's the proof that the first cases were identified on his birthday, 2019, December 24th. This is when the first sample was obtained of Vidco-19. Let's keep watching because there's more 58s as well. The actor that you saw taking shots with this girl, he is now 58 years old. You must destroy the myth. Kraft was the candy man. So who made the two shots of tequila? It was the tea man. He originated it. He becomes the scapegoat, the fall guy. But just understand that that's just code for demon possessed, basically, at that point. Is what I've decided these leaders have become. They just keep, this demon keeps hopscotching through these people. So it's clear to me now that T. Rump is Apollo, the bringer of the Candyman Stinger, because it all started under him in 2020, just like in the film, which was set in 2020, bringing us full circle. Now, I also watched another film 
that is actually trending right now on Netflix. The film is from 2007 and it's called Premonition. And it stars Sandra Bullock. We'll get into that after I confirm that you guys are with us. Very good. Welcome back, everybody. Now, if you are uh, wondering where we were last week, uh, we got kicked off of this channel. Uh, we caught a strike, so we were gone for seven days. But guess where we were? We were on the backup channel. So take a second now because uh, only about half of you made it over there. And we were doing live shows every day while we were kicked off of this channel. Those are some of our best shows that we did last week. For those of you that did take the time to uh, subscribe to Enter the Stars Reloaded, which is the backup channel, and you saw those shows, bless you guys for doing your diligence to stay connected. Now, if you missed those shows, please go back to Enter the Stars Reloaded and um, get caught up on those. Just, you know, watch them here and there when you get free time. They are very important. We got to keep up on what's going on, how they're slowly progressing us toward um, this agenda. And so that's what's going on with that. Now, let's get back into premonition. Now, we all know what a premonition is, don't we? Premonition is a foreshadowing of, event, of an event that had not happened yet, isn't it? Well, what happens in the plot of premonition? Well, what happens is Sandra Bullock is this woman who starts experiencing premonitions of her husband's death. She thinks she's going crazy. But here's the weird part about this film. Is that there's this influenza aspect to it. Which doesn't seem to fit within the context of the film. She goes to her father uh, from the Catholic Church. To, to see if he can make any sense of these visions. And the first thing he mentioned is the 1918 influenza spamdemic. Again, he mentions two shots. In this case, it's, it's two children who get shot by their father who was having the same kind of premonitions. He talks about going to the future. Let me let this do the talking here. At the height of the influenza epidemic. At the height of the influenza epidemic. At the height of the influenza epidemic. A father told friends he'd been to the future and seen the graves of his two small children. Boston, 1918. Oh, my God. The autopsy showed the children were never infected. He shot himself a week later. He went insane and shot them both to spare them the disease. Now, obviously, this is all happening now. So in the film, she's trying to save the life of her husband. She's trying to piece together these premonitions she's having to try to prevent the very act that she's been seeing in her dreams and visions. But in doing so, she actually causes his death by trying to change events. She actually follows him to Highway 57 at mile marker 220. And... In 2020, Sandra Bullock was 57 years old. So we have ourselves a supernatural mirror, don't we? 57 to 20, 2020, 57 years old. So all this is happening right now. Just before they both turn off the highway as she's following her husband to try to save his life. This is him here. You see the helium balloons. One of them is red. This is helium, which is Helios, which is Apollo. Watch. He went insane and shot them both to spare them the disease. Now they show this this intersection 
with these two 57s on it. They show it several times because first he drives through and then she drives through. She drives right up to the same intersection. So they want you to see this, right? They want you to see the 57 because she's now 57 years old and she was 57 years old in 2020. And so it's all happening right now. So we have two separate films with 2020 themes, both mentioning or depicting themes of two shots. Now, what do we have tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we've got another series that I decoded which also predated the spamdemic. This is called V-Wars. It's about an ancient pathogen unearthed from melting ice caps. The pathogen is a prion or a prion, and it spreads easily, and it makes people do what vampires do. And the politicians, in an attempt to control and placate the vampires, they offer them this free cure called blued sub but it's actually something else bl-double-o-d right as you can see on your screen there comes in a milk box milk of course is code for human sacrifice so here it is in a white box but inside it's red and this is a free government offer it ends up poisoning the vampires and they fall out in mass everything descends into chaos so we'll break all this down tomorrow and so I'm working in, on editing the trailer right now. I've actually got it right here. Here's the back end. If I put together these trailers, as you can see here, it's chock full right now. It's got 18 minutes of trailer. I'll probably uh, edit that down to probably about 12, 13, 14 minutes, somewhere in there. But this is unbelievable. Look at this, you guys. Cove DI right here. And there's so much more. McLeod is mentioned, which of course is the T-Man. And there's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff in here. So I got to, this is what I'll be doing today. Editing all this. I'll get the trailer up tonight. We'll do a full show. Breaking down the trailer tomorrow morning. Then Wednesday, we will be back on... Um, Wednesday, we'll be back on the headlines. There's some important... Headlines emerging as we go into the holiday season. But look at this. They give them this substitute. It's free. And they make you know that it's free. And it's given to them by the government and all these people fall out. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So let's go back here in the chat. See what you guys are up to. All right. So all we could say is hmm, interesting. Anytime we find these connections and synchronicities, can't really talk about what it means, but you guys know, you guys are smart people. All right. Thanks, Tom, for modding today. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Nothing is free. Exactly. Did I miss anything on that decode? Is there anything you guys saw that I didn't pick up on? Somebody said the whistleblower at Duping Delight. I heard about that. Heard about the whistleblower. Okay. Yeah, the Candyman movie creeped me out too, Susan. Now it's not so scary, right? Because we're adults. But back then, uh, those were some creepy films, you know? And now it's even more creepy in a different kind of way. Thanks, Amanda. Only because we see everything come full circle. And we see all of the metaphors. The hidden metaphors. That are now coming to fruition, right?
Thanks, Sharon. Sharon sending the links to many friends. Rebecca shares in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, another reason to stay on YouTube. There's a lot of people that come to YouTube. Here's what happens, okay? Yeah, it's great. We all have our own individual, quote unquote, free alternative websites, right? But how many people are going to make it over there? Only the people that are here. Divide and conquer, right? No one else is new is going to find those websites because they're not going to show up in their Google searches. Okay? It's tantamount to what they've done with these alternative websites is tantamount to on a farm when they separate some cattle to get a closer look at them. Okay? They, when the cattle is in the herd, they can't do an effective job of studying the cattle and, you know, dealing with issues. So they want to basically corral you into a separate area where they can monitor you and keep you away from the rest of the herd, right? Well, that's what they're trying to do here on YouTube. Okay, so this is why we have to stay. We also have to help the other cattle out there, you know, to, to not get lost. Because once once you're off of here, there's no way for the all the other people that come to YouTube that aren't awake yet to find the truth, right? So that's why we're here, okay? Um, I know it's frustrating because we have to change the way we talk and everything. But look, this is why we're the body of Christ. You guys can all work together and help the people understand what we're saying. Help them see the symbolism. Foreshadowing is the most powerful way to wake somebody up. Because, yeah, you can deny it as a coincidence the first time. You can deny it as a coincidence the second time you hear or see something. But when you start seeing a pattern... A theme, a common voice going back decades in film history. And it all connects together. When you start seeing the script writers repeat themselves over and over and over again. And you see it manifesting right now. That's much more powerful than a rumor of something that you can't prove is true. And that's why we focus on this symbolism. I, I guess it's all necessary. But, you know... Unless you've seen something with your own eyes, mainstream media controls everything, okay? And they'll just simply fact check whatever it is we say, you know, whatever, however strong the proof is, they'll just say, oh, we'll just fact check that. But how are they going to fact check symbolism? They can't, right? Can't fact check symbolism. Because it's just you're seeing it with your own eyes in their own language, in their own media, in their own pro uh, format. So that's why, you know, the, the work we do here is very important. So I appreciate all of you who have done your diligence to stay connected and spread the word to everybody that you can. I try to make the videos as concise as possible. And I try not to pontificate too much. I only show previous patterns. And if a new pattern emerges, I usually won't present that unless I've, you know, we've seen it. Enough times to where, okay, that's a pattern. Well, let me give you an example. Remember the It Clown? Remember that? And I was like, man, this, this seems connected to everything. But at first, I didn't really talk about it to you guys. I had to see more. I had to see more. Well, now it turns out that the It Clown is a Helios. He flies on helium balloons. Gives candy out to children. He's the clown. And so much more. We've seen the T-Man compared to a clown. Now understand, if you're new to this channel, we're not just picking on him. It's all of these puppets. They're all puppets. All of them. Okay? Bo Jivan included. Going back for probably as long as there's been presidents. So don't get upset. All right. Okay, yeah, you know what I'm noticing as well, I've heard chatter from you guys, and I'm noticing it myself, that the, there's some kind of weird uh, mechanism on some of these social media sites that basically disables most of the features and things we used to be able to do that used to be automatic. Sometimes your thumbs up don't go through, sometimes when you share something, it won't share it, and there's no reason, they don't give you a reason, it's just you're not able to share it. It doesn't say you can't share this because it's not real or true or because we don't want you to share it. It's just you can't share it. 
or when I send out a tweet with 6,000 people following my Twitter page, you get two thumbs up or something or two hearts. Something is wrong. And so what is this? Well, this is the, the fence, the technocratic fence. They don't want you to see the fence. It's like cows on a farm. The cows don't really see the fence, but they feel it, right? They feel it. Fences on farms aren't a visual deterrent. It's a sensory deterrent, isn't it? You get the zap, the old zappo. And that's what it's like here. It's, a, it's an electronic deterrent. It's an electronic fence that you really can't see. Until you see the, until you start to feel that your voice isn't being heard, until you feel the you being ignored, even this Facebook stuff. I remember that was a common criticism for people like us who think freely. We would be upset because no family and friends would actually like our videos or share our posts on Facebook, and many of you got very frustrated about that, and I did too. And so what was that really all about? Was it really that people were ignoring us or was it something, some kind of algo in Facebook that made it so what you were saying did not get out to them? I think that it was that it was something in their algo. Because usually you get some kind of response from people. Now, a lot of it's programming as well. People are upset at people like us because of how they've been programmed to relate to us right they've been programmed to have an aversion to us or to ignore us or to not listen but how many times do we have to be right before people start listening well unfortunately in this reality we could be right every single time and this could go on for decades and people would still not believe us and mock us because people have a very short memory don't they and people don't like to be wrong right so, sensory censorship, right? That's what we're experiencing. Trying to basically detach us from sensory perception of our surroundings. Now, one of you found something really cool. We'll go over a couple more things before we pop off of here. Might as well take care of these. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, let's switch gears a little bit here. Start talking about iPad Go 2 again. All of you will remember the apple on the floor. Let me type it in. The apple on the checkerboard floor. All of you have seen this, this image before. The apple roll across the floor, right? Well, I looked into this. And... You got a chessboard here and you got an apple. Well, I was shocked to find that there's actually a tree called a chess apple tree. Sorbus terminalis. And here's where it's distributed across the world. This is where it grows. And the interesting thing about this tree, this chess apple tree, for those of you that live in this region, probably know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you that know, you know that these don't germinate. The seeds don't germinate. It's too cold in some of these regions for the seeds to germinate. So how do these trees spread? They spread with a shot. They spread with a an offshoot. So in other words, they grow up from the ground from each other. Almost like a virus. And they spread from a shoot. There you go. The chess apple. I don't know if this is all connected, but interesting nonetheless. Here's something else we found. Now, one of you sent this to me because there was a boy in IPEC 2 called Ludovic. And we said that that sounded a lot like Lou. Co-vid. EO. <laughs> Gotta be careful when we say that word. 
But basically, this is a technique. His name is actually a technique. The technique that was illustrated in the film Clockwork Orange, where, let's see if we can hit images here, if it's not going to be too crazy, where they peel back of the eyes of this device, and then they load your mind with sensory perception. Right? On the themes of sensory and censorship. And this causes mind-altering things to happen to you. It's called the Ludo Vici Technique. Linking back into this Ludovic character, which appeared in iPad Go 2. It says the technique requires a subject to be strapped into a chair with their eyes held open while watching prepared films of violence under the influence of a purposely developed DRUG. In the film, this is given to Alex, and its name is Serum 114, which is 57 and 57, isn't it? So, now we decoded a clockwork orange, it's been a while. Sometimes these more overt uh, films that are just in your face... I, I kind of skip over because it's just too obvious, right? It's more the subliminal imagery that, that permeates throughout animations, through romantic comedies. You know, this stuff is everywhere and it's a common voice. It's the voice of the enemy is what it is. But you don't realize that until you, you see half dozen decodes that like we've done on this channel. Then you start to see the pattern. And only then do you see the pattern. So this is the Ludovici technique, which is, let's look, let's look up this boy here. So here's heliofound.com, the makers of iPad Got 2. And we go into the gallery, we see Ludovic, which of course is Lou, C-O-V-I-D, scrambled, right? So, here he is, eyes peeled back, sensory perception, and given some kind of uh, DRUG, which in I Bet Go 2, that's absolutely what happens. You see him laying on the ground next to needles and pills. So, I would say that that would be an accurate depiction of him. It's kind of what, like what's happening now, isn't it? All this sensory perception bombarding us. You guys, people are acting crazy. They are acting crazy. Okay? They are in deep fear. Deep fear. And it seems like the moment someone falls out from Vidco 19, they immediately jump on the people that have not gotten the Pokemon sticker. Have you guys experienced this? Because I have. Everything else is shut out of their mind. And they immediately. Jump on the pre-programmed. Scapegoat. Which is. The Unpokemon. Interesting times you're living in. Yes. There you go Joy. Joy's awake this morning. Heliophant, child of Helios. Absolutely. Look at the uh, look at the logo. It's a an eclipse. Helios. What's around an eclipse? The coronal part of the eclipse, right? See, this is all about what we're going through right now. Always has been. The eye moves the dot of the eye moves over next to the eclipse and there you have it this is from 2012 so let's go back here all right what else do you guys have yes people are getting very weird 
the protected people are getting very, very, very weird. Okay. Even though, um, according to uh, their, you know, what they're telling us, they're protected. But they're acting very scared. A lot more scared than people that didn't get the Pokemon. Which you'd think they'd be the ones that would be scared, right? But everything's backward in backwards world. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. Appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, like I said, we'll be back on there tomorrow. I got some editing to do, so I'm going to go ahead and pop off of here and uh, finish up my notes and everything. And we'll see you guys bright and early. I mean, we're going to upload this uh, this trailer tonight. So maybe I'll make it like 5, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard, so 3 p.m. Pacific time, I'll have this trailer up for you guys. Like I said, it'll be about 10 minutes long. And uh, then we'll cover it in full tomorrow. Appreciate all of your prayers. Appreciate your input. And just you guys showing up every day. It means a lot to me. Okay. I'll see you guys in the morning. Take care and be safe.